So okay. welcome everyone and, and thanks so much for taking the time on your Friday afternoon, early evening to participate in our sourdough baking class. Before we get started, I do want to say that we respectfully acknowledge that we live, work, and play on the unceded, ancestral, and traditional lands of Canada's First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. Thank our sponsors for today's events, for their generous co contributions. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to, to put this together. So thank you, Nelson the Seagull, who's our principal event sponsor and has covered the event expenses. And also thank you to Danica Imports, who provided merchandise for our gift basket. To keep your starter happy, you have to feed it, and um, you you technically don't have to discard anything. But oh. if you don't, your starter is just going to get exponentially bigger every time you feed it. Until eventually, you know, you just you know you have to do something with the with the discard. So um, we bake bread with the discard. So in the bakery, we don't waste a drop of sourdough because we're baking every day. So oh. so what home bakes is discard. We we're just throwing into the mixer to mix with make bread the next day. So, so that's when I say, you know, the bakery's got the unfair advantage because we constantly are... And like the recipe we have now is like a really straightforward recipe. And like once you're comfortable with that, there's a lot you can do with it. Um, but the biggest, biggest key, and like you can look this up online afterwards, is, um, is baking percentages. It's going to be like your biggest lifesaver for recipes. And like, it sounds more complicated than it is, but essentially, if you just pretend like all of your flour in a recipe is 100%, then everything else is a ratio of that. So for this particular recipe- What? Yeah. <laughs> so for this recipe, the math. <laughs> that, that sounds so complicated. <laughs> it's, um, Ratios? Okay. So we, so we have a thousand grams of flour here and 800 grams of water which means mm -hmm. we have an 80% hydration dough. Got it. So we're putting 200 grams of the starter in. Yeah, Perfect. exactly. And, and, if, and if you're following, if you're thinking in baker's percentages, which I'm always going to harp on because it's going to be the most useful thing for you long-term, we added 20% in. 20% of our recipe oh, in got it. baker's. I would really recommend getting a scale that's like super important. You can probably um, get away with guesstimating most things until it comes to salt. Okay. And then, you, and then you're going to be really upset if you get that wrong either way. So, oh, because it'll be too salty? Yeah, or taste like nothing. Mm -hmm. the, the key, honestly, is try to get fresh flour. And so, um, you know, if you've had a bag of flour sitting in the cupboard for like three years, that's not going to be any good. It's probably going to be like just technically food safe but it's going to have no nutrition for your sourdough to eat okay and then again like i was saying um the bowl scrape is so useful oh and i always keep a jug of water to wet my hand because if you're going to touch the dough oh the wet hand is super handy <laughs> so sorry I no jug yeah, of water Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> i have no water and this is oh it's only getting stickier and um, one thing I want to show now is kind of um, how weak it is. You can just pull chunks off just super easy. Um, because um, none of the gluten is developed yet. What's happening now is the flour is absorbing the water. That kind of activates um, the gluten, which gives dough a nice, lovely, long, silky stretch. And for whatever scientific reason, salt completely stops that process. 